Hey class, it's uh, Professor Nick Sinski at uh, UNC Charlotte, and uh, this is going to be uh, part one of the lecture three notes, and uh, just going to be talking today um, about paneling. Uh, that's the topic for this week. And uh, if you missed the other parts of the of the uh, of the lectures, you, you can go back and look at weeks two and uh, week week two and week one. Um, I'm going to be going through some things quickly that were already covered in those notes. Uh, so if, if you need a review, those those videos are also on YouTube. Um, so where we left off uh, last time, we were talking about uh, basic transforms and uh, looking at them in a series. And so an example of that would be a Dale polygon. <clears throat> and um, let's just make it a five-sided polygon for now, so pentagon. And um, you know we, we learned how to move something in the first week, let's take a unit Z, and that creates uh, another state of it. So there's the initial state, then the moved state. <clears throat> and we can take a number slider, and we can move that, you know, by some distance in the Z. Then I showed you how to take something like a series where you get multiple copies of something. So if you plug a list of numbers in, so we have 10 vectors, and you plug it in with one object, you get 10 things, okay? So that's a really powerful idea of how um, Grasshopper works. And I'm just gonna go ahead and finish off the rest of these things um, in the series. So we have a, a number of things that we want. Let's plug them in for um, number of values, okay? And then we have a distance between things Make that a real number. Make that ten or something. So again, I can change, you know, the distance, and I can change the number, <clears throat> and so you get, you know, fifteen copies of something. And um, we that's really good for establishing patterns. And we talked about how we can we can use we can use like the call command to just kind of you know like change change the numbering of that the patterning of that. What I want to talk about right now is applying uh, transforms to that list. So if I take a simple example, like I can I can rotate that piece, just like I showed you guys uh, in week two. Just just make this a 360 degree, and then if I change the <clears throat> expression here to use radians. So radians A, R, A, D, A. I can go through and I can actually rotate. Oh, let me hide these. Turn preview off. I can I can rotate these. Now it rotates the whole uh, mass because I put 15 things in and I'm rotating them all by uh, 1.26 radians, okay, 72 degrees. And what if we wanted to rotate each of these you know, differently so we could get some kind of a pattern? Okay, you need to match the number of things. So if you have 15 values, you need to give it 15 different angles or 15 angles. Um, some of them might be the same. And how do you do that? Well, an easy way to do that would be to go in to keep that around. Um, an easy way to do that would be to take a series of numbers and I've got the first number is zero and the step size, you can make the step size copy this here <clears throat> whatever you want let's make it like you know 15 degrees or something thereabouts and the number of values well it's probably gonna be the same number that you had here right so I start at zero you add 17 and you do it 15 times and you get roughly from zero to 245 degrees so if you plug that in for rotate um, you can see that you're gonna rotate each of these slightly differently uh, and that can kind of give you kind of a pattern. Just go ahead and loft those together. You get a sense of it. It's pretty pretty twisty right now. Um, we can probably do a little bit better than that. Um, what if we did something like five degrees? So a little bit less twisty, okay? So that way you get a very specific amount. So it's zero degrees, five degrees, all the way to 70 degrees, okay? What if you wanted to, to do something a little bit more, a little bit more parametric? Um, we could play with. Well, you could go in and uh, we could take 
<clears throat> a range. Let's take a domain. And plug that in. And let's take our slider that goes from 0 to 360. and make two copies. So then we get a range. And the number is a little bit different. So the, <clears throat> if you have a number of steps is 15, you actually get 16 things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take n minus 1 so that I have 15. Yeah, it's very important that like this number, 15, be equal to the number that comes out, and that's also 15. And let's say you could vary it from zero to some number, and then if I plug that in for my um, angle, I can vary the top piece, and I can vary the bottom piece. Like I can, I can, I can spin, I can change that twist, and I can go back, and you know, I could change if I have fewer objects give them more space you know I can get more twists like this way so now you've got a more interesting kind of parametric object here and again it's just because we had a certain number of things in this case now I have three and then I and then I gave it three different uh, angles with different parameters okay um, we can also do that with uh, scale let's go ahead and just preview these off and copy these. And then what I can do is uh, I can go in and uh, I'm going to remove this piece and I'm going to add a scale. So if I plug in scale, it adds more objects here. Okay. If I plug in something for scale, uh, you can see that it actually centers them at zero, zero, and we want to we don't want to do that. So like we did last time, Let's find the area of all these, the centroid. And then let's take the center and plug it in for the center. So this is a good example here of having the two types of parameters uh, have the same number um, in the list. So we have a list of six, and there's a list of six points. And so we get you know different scales for each one, different, different scale locations. And then lastly, we need six different scaling factors. Okay, I'm going to change the uh, parameter for this from 0 to five, let's say, and let's, let's make this actually 0.5. You don't want to have a scale of zero. Remember, scaling factor is some kind of, uh, it's it's like a multiplier, so 0.5 is going to be half, and uh, two is going to be twice as big. So these are very low numbers. And we're going to scale from 0.5 to, I don't know, five. So I get a range, 0.5, 1.4, 2 2.3. Plug the range in, <clears throat> let's hide these. And you can see that I get that for my uh, for my shape. And if I go in, I can play parametrically with you know, how that works. So it gets a little bit different when you have different different cross sections. So. You know that's that uh, works pretty well, and uh, but the thing is, it's pretty linear. Like you, you get the same kind of you get the same kind of like progression because you're just you're just actually dividing up that range. Is there a more interesting, more aesthetic way to do this? Uh, more kind of graphical. Um, in fact, there is. I'm gonna go ahead and um, turn preview off for this. Copy paste, and let's go ahead and. Um, Look at this again. So I've got my uh, my pentagons. I'm going to take a graph mapper component, and I'm going to use that for my uh, scale. I guess I should have actually kept that. Let's just work this back up again. Okay. But I'm still missing that that scaling factor. And what, what, uh, so what the graph mapper does is it's going to map uh, a range of values according to some kind of a curve. And so instead of getting a linear progression, like you just add things together, you can get things that, that start high and then go low and go high again, or that, that go up and down. It's basically a way of, of like mapping a range of uh, values. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and delete this domain piece. And I'm gonna, so the domain is going to be from zero to one. Still going to be 19 steps, so I get 20 things, because I have 20 things. And if I plug this in, 
nothing's going to happen initially because uh, I haven't done anything with the graph. Uh, and you'll notice that the values right now are going to be only from zero to one, but we'll, we'll take care of that in a second. Um, so let's see, I'm going to go in, I'm going to add a parabola. And just to show you what actually happens, I'm going to add a panel component. So the, right now the values of it are, I'm just going to go back and make this smaller. There. So we have five values. So it goes from 1.0 and then 0 0.4, uh, 0 0.10. So just like the graph, just like we think it is. And if it was a straight line, it would have fewer values. Okay, so we can keep that within a range. And if I plug that in to my scale, I get that, I get that shape that's in the graph. <clears throat> so it's actually, it's actually really interesting to, uh, to see this. I'm gonna go ahead and give myself a bit more room. And so you can see that if you have the graph mapper, you can really uh, do some interesting things with the shape of this without necessarily having to know what the numbers are. And there's different there's different kinds of graphs. It's like play with that Bezier. So very interesting. And all I'm doing is I'm changing the scale of it. <clears throat> okay, so um, you can use you can use graph mapper that way to to adjust things like uh, basically adjust any number. Um, but again, the values right now are only going to come out between zero and one. So if I wanted a different value, uh, I'm gonna have to add a multiplier. So add add a multiplication component, and I would take the values from this, and then some kind of multi multiple. Let's just copy this, and then so I get those numbers in, and I get a bigger number, you know, out. Okay, and then if I plug that in, it's actually kind of like I'm scaling. The whole thing there. So I'm just multiplying the numbers that come out of here by some number to make them bigger because they again they're very small initially. Okay, so I can do that for I mean again it's just about it's just about changing numbers. Uh, what I can do is I can also use that for um, the move component in my in my piece. So I could go in and I could put a graph mapper in. And I could put in um, another range component, and then plug this in for that. Um, and well, and again, I probably need a multiplier. The values are very small. There. Clean this up a little bit. So we'll take the value that comes out of the graph and then plug the multiplier in here. I need a more powerful slider here. So 25, no, 40. <clears throat> there we go. Okay. And then if I turn on the graph mapper, you know, again, I can experiment with the distribution of those, of the way I move them. So let's go through and let's look at distribution. Uh, some of them are gonna are gonna do strange things that you don't uh, quite want because you're gonna have things that are gonna be moving up uh, that are gonna be at different heights, and uh, you don't want that. You want you want a height to be to be constant. Uh, so Gaussian's not gonna work. It's gonna it's gonna loop things inside. Of you. Let's look at a power curve. There you go. So again, I'm moving these like cross sections using this graph. But then I can go in and I can take this graph and I could adjust those dimensions in some kind of odd way. I'm not sure if I'd like that. <laughs> yeah, that's a little bit better. So again, this, this kind of distortion is going to happen. And, and it's also dependent upon how I, how I choose this. So it's kind of like a snake that ate something. <laughs> So we'll kind of experiment with that. Like the, 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 but using the power curves is a nice kind of graphic way to control um, your variables uh, instead of just using linear math the way that we have been, okay? 
Um, I could probably do a better job of organizing this, but that's okay. So I have a power curve that controls the, the cross sections and then a power curve that controls the uh, scaling. And the combination of those two is giving me a lot of control with this parametric object. And again, I can actually scale, I can scale both of these. Um, so graph mapper is, uh, is an interesting thing. One last piece I wanna show you with um, graph mapper, let me go ahead and turn this off. Again, graph mapper is just a way of distributing uh, things over a range, numbers over a range. So, um, you know, if I've got a line, I can take a curve, and we've done a lot of things like this where we find, you know, points on a curve, and they're in a very, very kind of regular uh, fashion. But what if you use a graph mapper to distribute those points into something more, you know, interesting? So I could take uh, my curve that I referenced, and take um, there's a component called uh, evaluate length. If I plug a curve into it, it looks at the length factor for the curve, which is a number from zero to one. Zero is the starting point and one is the end point. And just to demonstrate, I could take one, a number slider and plug it in. And so this is a quarter of the way all the way to the end. So I can, can find a point along that by putting a number from zero to one. Uh, if I take uh, the uh, graph mapper, I can plug that in for the length factor and plug in a range. So right now it's pretty regular, but if I go in and I change the type to something, I can distribute those points in different ways. And of course, as I've talked about frequently in the last uh, two weeks, you know, once you have a point in space, that's one way to, to distribute geometry that you have. So if I go through and I've got these columns, <clears throat> those are huge. Um, I can go in and I could, um, you know, distribute them in different different ways. I could go through and adjust the Bezier for them, get kind of a gradient. And you know, since these are so easily controlled with a, with a radius setting, you know, I could go through and I could use this to control uh, that dimension as well. I mean, again, it's just numbers. Like anything, anything that I've got a number for can be controlled. So kind of a gradient of that, or perhaps a gradient of the uh, height. Problem with this is, again, is that the number that's coming out of it is actually pretty small. So I probably need to multiply it by something to get some action there. But in general, um, just the idea that, you know, don't don't get stuck in any one way of thinking about these. Like, this is just about a way of um, looking at numbers uh, using this, uh, this graph curve, okay? So that ends part one. Um, go ahead and practice these and uh, bring questions with you uh, to class on Thursday. I'll see you in part two. So for this last part, uh, I just want to cover a uh, third topic. Uh, we talked about you know how you can control things uh, using uh, range and series to send um, a bunch of numbers to a list of cross sections or to a list of objects that you made. Um, and then I showed you how to use the graph editor, the graph mapper, to uh, also change uh, the values you put in. Another way that we've that we've talked about, uh, but we haven't seen yet with this, is uh, introducing random numbers. Okay, so. You know, what if I gave it a, a series of, of random numbers? So let's go ahead and take this example <clears throat> that I've been looking at. And uh, actually, instead of rotate, why don't we do scale? It's a little bit more interesting. So I got a scale, okay. And um, what I can do is I can take a random, it's like the, this cat in the box, this is Schrodinger's cat. Take the random, and random starts with a range, and then you have a number of random values and a seed, and you get a series of numbers. So uh, the number is pretty easy. Take this from here, oops, not to there, to here. Let's make this our seed though, let's copy this. This will be our seed. So eight things, and right now we have a range of numbers from you know zero to one, it's not too bad. Let's just make it, 0.5 to 2 for now. 
You can always add a domain and some sliders, but right now. So that's a pretty good range. If I plug that random number uh, thing in for my scale, I get a, I get a totally different uh, random distribution. Okay, and if I change the uh, seed, I get all manner of randomness. Okay, so that, you know, anywhere you want numbers, you could also supply uh, random, and that would be, that would be something um, you could find some use for. So, um, that's the way that uh, that random works. I'm going to go ahead and take all this that I've been talking about and try to apply it to maybe a practical example. So let's go ahead and um, <clears throat> kind of hide all this stuff. And um, I'm going to go ahead and I want to make, let's say, a facade design with some with some windows, and I want to kind of randomly vary their placement. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm actually just going to go ahead and um, start with a rectangle pattern, the one that we've been using. So rectangle, <clears throat> domain, set this to negative B. Let's add um, some kind of a number slider to A and B. Plug this in here. Oops. Okay. And um, that gives me my rectangle, and the rectangle is actually it defaults to, you know, the x y plane. So, I mean, this is my rectangle. I need. I actually want it to appear on the uh, x z plane. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take an x z plane. So it starts off here, and uh, I'm going to move it. in the X unit. So XC plane, it's my geometry, moving it. Okay, so I've got oh, a piece of geometry and then I'm going to plug in a uh, series. So it's gonna give me a series of planes and I need to <clears throat> add some more sliders to this. So the distance between them Oops, wrong one. There, so we'll use this one. Okay, so the distance between them and the number of things, which is going to be pretty large. So I've got some planes. Okay, <clears throat> let's go ahead and hide. stuff and what I want on those planes is my rectangle that's the whole point of this so take the planes plug them in now I've got my rectangles okay all that for those rectangles okay so I've got you know what could be part of my facade like something I'm, I'm studying okay and I could do something really in, in basic where I could just move them in the uh, Z direction so Z unit plug in my Geometry. Now it's gonna move them all. <clears throat> but what if I went in and I put in a random number for that? And I took my number that I use in the series. Hmm. Already more interesting. Uh, let's plug in a seed. Let's take a different different randomness here. So I could do that. What if I took a random number and I plugged it in for the, uh, the, the, the width of it? So take it in. And that's actually kind of interesting. We could play with that domain. So let's say from 0.5, so half a foot to maybe two feet. Right, too much distance there. Okay, <clears throat> one and a half feet maybe. Okay, and you know if you don't, um, if you don't like that, you could play with the the seed. Play with the spacing a bit. Oh, 
Um, but again, we can play with the uh, with the range. Put a domain in. Let's go delete these for now. <clears throat> I could play with you know, that distance and that distance and my seed and just kind of <clears throat> shuffle up those window designs. And you know you could you could apply uh, different kinds of logic to it, but that's just a simple way. And then if I took, you know, um, I could start to make these into windows. I, I, I could apply if I took that rectangle logic, I could apply like an offset and I could put a, a frame in there, maybe subdivide it and you know, I could quickly kind of study uh, that kind of random pattern um, on my on my facade, um, and uh, really adjust it until it's until it's interesting to me. So that's a way to take that you know what we've been talking about with with, with sort of randomness and just taking some simple geometry and uh, you know really doing a study with it. And you know you could apply randomness to you know the extrusion distance, you know not just the size or the the actual, you know, the actual like position. What about a little bit of rotation with it? Um, so, you know, between randomness uh, and the graph mapper and more, uh, and some more sort of, you know, like linear forms uh, of finding parameters, there's lots of variation that you can, that you can find. And, you know, a computation doesn't have to be uh, crazy looking. It can, it can be more sort of like conventional uh, ways of exploring things uh, logically. So, uh, that's it for this part of the lesson. Um, I'll see you in the uh, second part.